Good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome to the January 23rd uh, meeting of the Emmitsburg Planning Commission. To get things started, we'll stand and uh, say the pledge to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, liberty, And I meant to say, whoever wishes to stay in may stand. <laughs> Don't have to stand. So, um, gosh, I guess the first thing we do is reorganize. How about that? So um, we're here to elect new officers this evening. And as I mentioned last time, I will not be included in any of the office positions because I will be leaving next month. So it's up to other folks to serve. <laughs> um, so I'll get things started uh, since I'm not eligible for any officer positions. So the first position is uh, the chairperson. And do I hear any nominations for the new chair? And I understand that Valerie Turnquist is with us online via Zoom. Okay, well, I assume she's here. Yep, I'm here. I'm listening. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I'm looking for nominations for new chair. No. Mm -hmm. How about Kevin? Oh, okay. I didn't say <laughs> that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I hate to nominate Kevin. Okay. I second nominations. For okay. Kevin. We have uh, a nomination for Kevin Hagen. Are there any other nominations? If not, Kevin's the new chair. <laughs> you want to take over? You want to move? No, we can, just... we can stay. <laughs> Rotate. Okay. Next up, we have nominations for vice chair. Do we have any nominations? I'll nominate Patricia Galloway. I'll second that. So we have a vote for Patricia Galloway. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any nays? Patricia's the new vice chair. <laughs> you accept. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Okay. Next, we have nominations for secretary. Uh, point of order. Yeah. Uh, this past year in April, we made a modification in the secretary stuff, but we never voted on. At least I can't find it in the minutes anywhere we voted on it. And we actually basically did away with the secretary position because Najina started doing it all. If, if I may, you know, we, we didn't really do away with the secretary position. It's just that uh, our planning staff basically takes over and does the minutes for us. The minutes, well, okay. But we, we still have a secretary. There might be times you need to sign documents or something. Okay, right. okay. that's clear. Or clear. Under the rare circumstances that both the chair and vice chair are missing. It's the secretary. You're the third in command. Okay, I'm just clarifying it because that's... <laughs> seen the point of when I've seen the... The SOP coming through, I said, okay. <laughs> but if Dan's willing, I, I move that uh, he retain his position as secretary. Yeah. I second. It's always tradition that the newest person newest is secretary. Oh, that's Dale. <laughs> yeah. He's alternate. <laughs> He's alternate. You can't get it to answer. You're stuck unless somebody else wants to step up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next, we move on to the approval minutes for the September 25th meeting. Anyone have any comments on the minutes? I had one edit to the minutes. It would be on the very last page, item eight. Which one? Item eight. Next meeting date, that should be Tuesday. The 
No, Tuesdays and Monday. Okay. Is it really, is the date really September? That seems like ages ago. No, no, she, she's reading the wrong line. It's, it's December 11th meetings. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or modifications anyone like to make to the minutes? Move that uh, we approve the minutes for uh, December 11th. Second. Minutes were approved by Mark and seconded by Dan. So minutes are approved. Next, we move on to public comment. Do we have anyone that wants to make a public comment online or? Nope. Okay, with no public comment, we'll move to on to go over our old business for the comprehensive plan update. Jayla, you got? Um, so like, like I said, said on the agenda, it's going to be discussed at the next meeting. Staff needs some more time to make the edits suggested at the last meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay, move on to new business. Our first item will be in the improvement plan for Mount St. Mary's University, the F-Wing entrance. Do we have? No one? Mm -hmm. okay. Interesting. Okay. Uh, the town staff have any comments? <laughs> okay. Um, so the applicant is seeking um, approval of this improvement plan that Im involves the uh, redevelopment of the parking lot and drop-off area. Uh, for the E-Wing section of uh, Daughters of Charities uh, Ministries property located at 341 South Seton Ave. Um, this project involves the dem demolition of existing pavement and the drop-off loop to establish new sidewalks, parking, uh, landscaping, and also stormwater management BMPs. So a couple of things to note about this plan. Um, it proposes an additional 0.56 acres of um, imp impervious coverage, um, but it also, um, sorry, give me one second. Um, the person from Mount St. Mary's, he, he tried the Zoom link, but it didn't work for him. He just emailed me, so. Um, and my computer just shut down. <laughs> Is he trying to get in now? He's still not able to get in.
thanks for your patience. We're trying to figure this out. Um, do you want me to keep going with my Yeah, just comments? keep going with your comments. Okay. Um, so like I said, this plan has um, proposed an additional 0.56 acres of impervious coverage and also proposes two submerged gravel wetland BMPs on site to treat the additional uh, impervious surface. Um, staff has uh, reviewed the plan and the town engineer um, sent a set of comments um, that have been included in the uh, memo uh, from December 15th. And the applicant has also prepared a set of responses to these comments provided that um, provided to us last week. Uh, and that's what I passed out earlier. Um, well, staff is currently reviewing these responses to determine whether they've been adequately addressed or not. Um, and we've, we're also reviewing the updated plans. Um, it looks like a lot of the comments have been addressed, but um, the, the applicant has been regularly engaging with um, the, the town engineer and town planner to hash out the details. Um, one of the comments that the engineer had was, um, well, the first one on the improvement uh, plan and site plan uh, to include an electrical conduit associated with light pole to be relocated. Um, and the applicant responded saying that's been removed from the plan and that all the nearest on-site lights will be removed and replaced with new fixtures and light poles. If photometrics are desired, they, these can be delivered once they're complete, to which uh, we've responded saying that photometrics have to be included in the improvement plan. So that's one thing they have to uh, satisfy before um, moving on. Um, and like I said, we're still reviewing the rest of the plans. But given that they've been uh, in constant, constant communication to hash out the details, uh, staff uh, proposes conditional approval of the uh, improvement plan. Letting the commissioners have questions this time. Mr. Chair, I had a question about the tree removal um, do we know how many trees are being removed and what is the procedure for that? I remember a discussion about a fee in lieu of, or do they have to plant, you know, as many trees as they're removing or how does that work? And do you know how many trees they're actually taking down? If I may, I have, I have part of the yes. answer to that question. A lot of trees taken down are dead trees. And they're taking them down because they're putting parking lots in where they are currently standing. Right, I understand that. But doesn't the town have some sort of... Um... It doesn't apply on the Seton Village, on the Seton complex. It's not in town limits. Not in terms of town, not, not in terms of town ordinances. It's private property. That's still within town limits. And so, yeah, I, I changed that. Yeah, say it's because it's, 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 it's institutional incident. The, the, the laws are the rules are different. And they are planting tree. I've, 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 there is no tree in this new one. What's the big one? <laughs> you have. I thought I saw a count on the big one. If I remember now. I was just going to say, I think that the staff would need to answer Valerie's question, I believe. Yeah. Sorry, I don't remember off the top of my head how many, um, but it's more uh, plants are being planted than what's being removed, but I can confirm that number. Um, give me one sec. If, if I may, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah. if you look at the grading and landscape plan at C103, it shows quite a number of trees being put in and they're meeting all the requirements for the percentage of the parking lot that needs to be covered. 
uh, so, I mean, I haven't counted them all up, but it, it sure looks like they're putting in more than they're removing. Yeah, according to the landscaping plan. Fifty. That's like putting in over one hundred fifty trees. And, and fifty landscaping and, items. And just to respond mm -hmm. to Commissioner uh, Garnett's. Uh, this property is in the town limits and they have to I, adhere I, I to the ta myself, town yeah. code. <laughs> I corrected myself. I said, they may have, no, they are in town limits. They're yeah. institutional. I agree. Yeah, I caught myself, corrected it. <laughs> town limits are just after it. <laughs> so Val, are you satisfied with the information we have now? Um, yes, I'm, I'm satisfied, but moving forward, maybe Najila could just, um, email me just to kind of clarify you know when those rules apply and when they don't and what is the rule because i know for new developer developers and i and i understand it's not a new development but there is a requirement for you know if you're removing trees that you either have to pay a fee or and 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 it may be only if you meet certain conditions i really don't know that's why i'm asking I just remember having these discussions in the past. Uh, right. So the fee in lieu is like the last resort. So first, if you're removing trees, you would have to show that there you can a forest on site or somewhere else. And um, if not, if you're not able to, that's when the fee in lieu applies. Um, I can also send you the section of the code that addresses the fee in lieu. But okay, case, yep, that would be great. Yeah. But you're saying it doesn't apply in this situation. Right, because they're a foresting um, or they're replacing a lot of the plants that they're removing. Okay. Are there any other questions from the commissioners? If I may. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like the applicant has addressed all, all the concerns of the um, engineer. And I realize staff hasn't had this very long. It just came in and they're still assessing to make sure that they are meeting all the uh, uh, comments of the engineer. But, you know, it looks, looks like a good plan to me overall. Still no luck with the applicant. Nope, I'm the only one on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know if somebody joins. <laughs> As y'all while we're waiting, I just had one question where they're putting in the impervious surfaces. The cemetery there is below ground level. Is there any discussion of the water runoff into the cemetery to the east there? Uh, Which cemetery? There was two of them there. Right, but it's the first one's right there against the road. Right, so the, um, sorry, the BMP is being uh, connected to uh, to an outlet structure, so it wouldn't be going into the cemetery. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all, all the runoff should be going into the stormwater. Right, it's just I figured what's that's below water below grade now and it already and, floods and, the, and you have the roadway the yeah. cemetery is outside of the roadway so yeah storm drain should catch it <laughs> <laughs> so any word from the applicants of cease typing over there furiously to him <laughs> no no response from him i sent i just sent him the, the current uh zoom link So, uh, Mr. Chair, although I would like to hear from the applicant, um, I don't know that we need to, to move no. on and improve this. Uh, it doesn't seem to be too controversial. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, if, if at some point the applicant comes in and wants to say something, we, we can do that. But I'm ready to go ahead and make a motion. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve this? Uh, I move to approve the improvement plan for E-Wing entrance with the following conditions. All the comments uh, by the town engineer 
and the owner shall provide the town with two two paper and one PDF copy of the sign plan and the developer shall pay such fees that are charged from time to time by the town of Emmitsburg for further reviews or permits as may be required concerning the proposed developer. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Long. Does anyone second the motion? I will second. Okay, we have a second on the motion by Commissioner Galloway. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any nays? Motion approves five to zero. The next thing we have on our thing is for the Planning Commission's rules and procedures. Um, Mark, you were driving a lot of this. You want to speak to it? Yeah, I guess I initiated this. Um, the, the first thing that popped in my head at one point when I was kind of reviewing this was just the time needed to be changed and Najila has already taken care of that <laughs> the time of our meetings uh, but I got reading I thought there might be some other things we want to just uh, discuss and think about uh, including uh, and you received I, th I think I sent this out to everyone yesterday uh, uh, the email that has all my suggested comments and then Najila provided copies uh, this evening for everyone as well. Um, but, but the first item that I was suggesting would come under section five, uh, conduct of commission members. And I'm suggesting to insert at 5.5, the, the being recognized and just mention the commission members shall only speak after being recognized by the presiding officer. Um, Oops, sorry, thought I had that off. So, so th this has not been a big problem at all, but uh, and we don't often have a large audience, but uh, it's just a good a good rule for meetings, you know, just to keep things organized and from descending into chaos if uh, the the members just get the chair's attention <laughs> first and be recognized by the chair before speaking. So that's why I'm putting that in or suggesting we put that in. So, so do we want to take comment by comment and discuss yeah, the Any of the commissioners have comment on that? Um, I guess just one quick comment. Um, I know I wasn't recognized. <laughs> um, <laughs> an example, like Dan said, point of order a moment ago. Um, would he have to get the chair's attention to say point of order? Because, I mean, I don't know. It just seems a little strict or I don't know that. Um, what are your thoughts? Under are there Robert's times under Robert's orders. rules of order that? Yeah, as you know, I'm my favorite document that I carry copies of. <laughs> um, under Robert's rules of order, even a point of order would have to go back to the chair or the presiding officer. You'd have to get the chair's attention before saying yes. point of order. Yes, that's Robert rules of order. Yeah. And if I may. Yeah. So, and and I I don't personally I don't think you have to be too strict about it, but um, you know, and sometimes you know, sitting here as chair, you don't see people out of each side of you. Um, but I I know sometimes if you just keep keep your mic off and turn the mic on when you want to be noticed, the red light will come on and maybe the chair will see the red light. And if everyone keeps it off at other times when they aren't speaking, it's helpful or just kind of raise your hand, Mr. Chair, can I speak? Something like that just to get the chair's attention. But, um, you know, I don't know that we have to be too terribly strict right. about it. Nigeria, can we change the rules ourselves like this, or do we need, does it need to go to the council for us to change the rules? Yeah, it needs to go through the council. So, so again, if I may, yeah. um, so, so we have other things to discuss yet. I, I'm kind of suggesting we, you know, I'm going to explain all my recommendations. And if anybody else has anything, you know, to throw that out. And then kind of sit on it for a month and, and not vote on this tonight uh, would be my idea. 
Okay. <laughs> and just just give people time to think about it a little bit. Okay. But it makes perfect sense. Does anybody have any other questions about the number one listing we had there about recognition by the presiding officer? Okay, with that, we'll move on to section number two. <laughs> okay, Mr. Chair. Uh, at the section three where it says hearings, I'm just suggesting put the word public in front of hearings. Um, it's probably implied, but just thought it's good to make that explicit that it's a public hearing. It kind of tied along with that um, and, and our town attorney isn't here this evening, but I, I, I wanted her to clarify for us exactly what is a public hearing or, or maybe Najila can do that, I suppose. So I, so I did reach out to Leslie and Clark today um, or yesterday um, and I haven't heard back yet um, other than um, so yeah, they didn't say anything about public hearing, but uh, they did say something about what um, constitutes a quasi-judicial matter for planning commission. And that subject is apparently limited, but they're doing some more research and they'll get back to us. Okay. okay. Yeah. And the last time I checked, we're still subject to the majority, can't have discussions outside of one of those meetings or you know without announcing it as a public hearing right you can't have yeah. those discussions so, no, so we, we commissioners really shouldn't be discussing anything outside of this meeting it, right but it, it's, it's we've it's given the, we've given the impression that we ran i ran into this with other commissioners on the commission, they said, if three of us were together, even if we're not talking it, it gives the impression of business. Even if there's no discussion to take place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, we shouldn't, we have to be aware of that. Okay, well, wait for you. Do you think she could email us on the meetings? That way we have that for our next meeting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So part of the reason I was bringing that up was um, because if you read in our current rules of procedure under hearings, at any hearing, we're supposed to swear people in. And we have done that very rarely. There's only mm -hmm. been a few circumstances where we've sworn people. So that's why I thought we needed to get clarification as to what circumstances yeah. we need to do that. Um, because I've noticed since being on the County Planning Commission, we're swearing people in carte blanche at every meeting. At the beginning of the meeting, everyone gets sworn in, but yeah. that may just be because there's so many issues that right. it's just covering the bases. So I wasn't sure exactly when people needed to be sworn in or what constitutes a quasi judicial matter. Okay. And I guess that moves us on to Six one, yeah. The cross examination, um, which uh, since I've been on the planning commission has never happened here. <laughs> and, and when I say cross examination, I'm not meaning that the commissioners are asking questions of the applicant. This would be someone in the audience or in the public that would be asking questions of the applicant. Um, and um, and and it would be people that. So, say you are reviewing a site plan somewhere and there's a neighbor that is concerned about what's being developed, that they would have the opportunity to stand up and actually ask questions of whoever the applicant is. Uh, but the key is that they need to be very precise and they only should be questions. They, the, the person doing the cross-examination shouldn't be speechifying because quite often these folks kind of have an ax to grind or something. So <laughs> quite often uh, tend to uh, want to give speeches about something. So, um, you know, it needs to be controlled somewhat. But, uh, and, and here again, it's probably something we need to get clarification from legal on, but uh, it might be something good to include in our rules. And if it ever comes up, <laughs> it may be that no one knows that you can do this. Right. <laughs> but legally, you're allowed right. to do it. Do any of the commissioners have 
questions about that or comments? Um, I, can, I can add something on that. The Board of Commissioners have rules of procedure that were approved by legal, and there is information in there about public hearings. So we could potentially pull quite a bit of information out of those rules of procedure to put into our policy. It, it talks about, you know, public hearings and swearing people in and, you know, cross-examining, so on and so forth. So, so the language is already there that we could tap into. So, Valerie, on that, was the speaking time limit including in the cross-examination or it does, wasn't addressed or? Um, I think, let me see, I opened it up. Let me see real quick if I can find it. Um, yeah, it does say um, applicant testimony, 10 minutes, um, other public testimony, five minutes, rebuttal, five minutes. The president has the discretion to limit the presentation. Um, everything has to be sworn and there, there's a statement, do you solemnly swear, blah, blah, blah. Um, it talks about formal rule, rules of evidence. The commissioners may ask questions. Any exhibits presented must be assigned an exhibit number. And these board, uh, these um, rules of procedure were, I think, compiled by Leslie and then adopted by the board of commissioners. Um, so there's quite a bit of info. So we, we may want to look at those rules of procedure to see what we want to maybe take out of there, incorporate into ours. Did you get that out to us? <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Okay. Anyone have any questions about Valerie's comments? I do not. So, um, yeah, I, I basically agree with Valerie. I, there may be some circumstances that would be different with the Planning Commission than the Board of Commissioners, although I can't think of what they might be. But, uh, you know, of course, Leslie should review whatever we decide to do, but including the times for testimony yeah. and all that, I think it's a good idea. Times for the applicant to present and <laughs> cross-examine yeah. and, you know, all that. Okay. Are there any, any other questions or comments anyone has? Okay, with no question or comments, I'll recommend that we take a look at these and everything that was said about these changes over the next month. And then we can look at voting on this as part of, put it on next month's agenda at the end for us to discuss and go over and vote. And hopefully we can have Leslie reviewed it by then. And if we vote, it'll go up to the commissioners then to make the formal changes. Um, I believe so, but I let, let me check on that because it's just the planning commission's rules of procedure. So I don't know if board of commissioners. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll I'll find out and I'll okay. With that being said, looks like we have nothing else to do tonight. That means I would call this meeting to an end of the. Emmitsburg Planning Commission at 734. <laughs>